to another week of Vibe tier list where I judge the most recent episodes that we watched. And the cutoff is going to be changed till Monday. So basically, Sunday is the last thing we watched Mushoku Tensei. We haven't watched Kimichi today, haven't watched Seven Shoda, so we're still going to re include those videos. But here we go. We go from peak, great, good, mid, and dookie. Newgate. Um, Newgate. What do you guys think about it? I think Newgate was pretty mid last episode, right? Like, what really? I thought that it was going to pop off. But the battle against the princess was like... Like, <laughs> the amount of frame they added. Like, there's a scene in Demon Slayer where Zenitsu just like has like a joke moment and does thunder beating to move the fucking rock or some shit. He moves. And then, like, that budget was more expensive than the entire episode of Newgate. I'm sorry, the story is not that compelling. The battles are not good quality at all. You're, all you can really do is have funny slice of life moments or, you know, a horse knee and tear out. Other than that, Newgate's been pretty... Eh. Eh. Mid doesn't mean bad, remember. Mid just means, like, okay. Just not great. Not bad. It's just... Eh. Windbreaker. Windbreaker was... I put it on like a good or a great episode. Was it a great episode? Not really. And like, we're kind of at this end of the season where we're trying to wrap shit up and kind of hint at season two. So the content that we're working with is kind of like lackluster and that's not the manga's fault. It's just we're in this like transitionary phase where... It's not supposed to be hyped. They're introducing new characters. I enjoyed Mr. Wrestler Muscle Dude. I enjoyed the Gyaru guy <laughs> with the pink hair. You know, we got new Bofri in top five of the rookies. Fucking <laughs> Nide can die. I hate that kid. I hate that kid. Nide fucking sucks. But other than that, I thought it was like a pretty good episode. Mission Yozakura Family. Mid or good? Mid or good? It's definitely not great. It's just... We had like... Big Sister Futaba scenes. Which is I guess kind of like adorable. If you really care about the character. But Futaba is like... I don't know. I just... I'm, I, I'm just like waiting for the fucking plot to hit. And the worst part about this show is like... I am now approaching Yozakura with such a more... What's the way? Like a more strict way of judging it. I'm I'm criticizing it way harshly compared to any other animes like New Gate because like I have no fucking faith in New Gate, right? But Yozakura is a show that everyone fucking keeps saying it's gonna get better, bro. It's gonna get better. And when you keep saying shit like this, it's gonna raise my expectations. And for every episode that doesn't deliver on the fucking main plot or moves forward, I just feel like it's just mid. Even though it's probably not mid. That's why I feel so harshly about Yozakura because. Nothing is happening, and the manga readers are saying, bro, just 13 more episodes, man, 13 more episodes. I'll just put it on good, I guess, like, I guess the exam selection, right? The selection exam mark was kind of funny. It was cool to see the different proctors, especially the grandpa. Had a little bit of <laughs> yaoi moments, I guess, with, you know, Taiyo getting thirsted over after that new guy, so... It's probably between here, right? It's like mid or good, it's just like... I don't... I, I, animation quality-wise, I think it's way better in New Gates. So I'll have to put it on good. New if Newgate is the anchor for being mid, I think Yozakura can be safely good. Appraisal Isekai. I would put Appraisal Isekai on also good. Because like, yeah, we got Mirela and we kind of just like understand what her character is about. She's like a drunk. She's belligerent. She does fucking nothing. Everyone's mad at her. But... She's challenged, you know, we got to see what she's made of. And now we're doing like a little bit of a team excursion. We're doing uh, team battles and the simulation fights, not that interesting. The most interesting thing is like the mind games that play with Mirela, you know, reading ahead of, you know, um, reading ahead of the other team. So I think that it was a good episode overall. Mm, definitely better than Yozakura, but I wouldn't put it on great either. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it like this. Maybe this is the actual order of what's in the good tier right now. I don't think it was a great episode, but it was not a mid episode. I think it was a good episode solid. Mushoku Tensei? Well, <laughs> I don't want to spoil, 
But like Father's Day happened, and uh, I'm sure everyone kind of knows by now. If you're a Mushoku Tensei fan, I'm, I'm sure you know. I'm not. In case you don't watch Mushoku Tensei, I probably shouldn't give you the details of what happened. But it's one of those episodes, you know. It's character death. It's it's a crazy fucking episode. And damn, I didn't cry. I was not emotionally impacted on like a crying level because it was so fucking obvious that it would happen, right? For episodes and episodes, they've been kind of hinting and hinting and hinting, death flags all over the place, to the point where the previous episode literally said, you know, these are famous last words. So it was extremely obvious on who was gonna die. That's why I had my guard up, and when it happened, it's like, well, here it is. Here it is. But the really shocking thing, the really shocking thing, like, I wasn't crying, but I was in shock. And it wasn't even about, like, the obvious death. It was about the aftermath after the death. I did not expect that part. I had no fucking clue that we would have to deal with an aftermath of saving you-know-who. And it's like, holy shit. Holy shit. So, what are we gonna fucking do now? We're going back into the depression arc, I guess, but I put it on a fucking peak episode. The emotional tones, it was just a pop-off episode in the making. I didn't cry. I was more in shock. I've cried for Beyblade, but I'm not going to cry for fucking Mushoku Tensei. All right. Skimichi Mula Fantasy, easily peak. I would put Skimichi Mula Fantasy easily in peak episode. And again, it's not today's episode. This is last week's episode. And last week's episode, I think I already put it on peak. Basically, it was just Makoto being a disrespectful motherfucker to everybody. It's not even a fight against Io, Rona. None of them fucking matter. Sophia, none of them fucking matter. We're just trash talking them. Just sitting there doing fucking nothing. Just recovering and just kind of defending, dodging, tanking. Sophia can't do shit. She's like had five different fucking power-ups. And it's like, nah, it doesn't matter. In fact, you got fucking charmed by Trash Moki. That was like, wait, what? Did that actually happen? I think it actually did happen. Last episode, fantastic. We're looking forward to Shiki taking out Lancer today's episode, I think. Maybe Makoto able to step in, but I would like Shiki to have his own like pop-off moment against Lancer. Seventh Shota, the most recent, not today's episode, most recent episode, absolute fucking banger. The animation in this show is crazy. The animation, the budget, like I don't think that an anime, whether or not how good an anime is determined by how crisp the animation is. I value good storytelling, soundtrack, and voice acting way over animation. In fact, animation is one of the last parameters that I put on the priority list of what makes a good anime. Everyone has very different, you know, um, standards of what they enjoy, but that's just my opinion. But despite that, I think that Seven Shoda is actually delivering on the story as well. The emotional tone with the Assassin's Guild, the way that... What's his name? <laughs> oh, shit. What's his name? Jade? The way that you saw how like Jave gave himself up to kind of like protect his friends. And then Seventh Shota goes into Jade's fucking memory palace. I'm not sure what's going on. He was able to connect and learn about the secrets of, you know, Dark Wolf or whatever the fucking teleportation is reading it. And then having Dragon Ball Z fight on top of that. Peak, peak, peak. And I don't think it's really over yet, right? Like today's episode should be even more fucking insane. I'm not sure if it's um seventh, second most watched show in Japan, by the way. That does not surprise me, knowing how Japan likes. I will relieve that. You, you can fill in the uh, you can fill in the sentence at the end. But I think that last episode was fucking fantastic. The season overall, I think like probably one of the best animes this season. It's just the glaring elephant in the room is is fucking elephant of a fucking ass. The BBL showed a, it's it's not a good look. But if you kind of look beyond that, everything else surrounding the story is extremely fucking hype. Tensura was a meeting episode. And I would not put it at peak. I think that if you're comparing what Tensura is at peak, like, is it fair that a meeting episode cannot be peak because I enjoyed the fighting episodes more? That is a philosophical debate. But that doesn't matter because this is my fucking personal enjoyment tier list. You want to fucking rate a meeting episode and peak, make your own fucking tier list. No one's going to fucking watch your videos, though. I enjoy Tensura meetings. I thought it was pretty engaging. 
I thought the discussion with the Rotso family, the Eastern merchants, Yuki, stuff like that, that's always compelling to me. The meeting episodes where no one is like... Like, remember the meeting episode where we were talking about the fucking... <laughs> putting down the fucking tr railroad and the, the fucking... Sorry, the, the road for transit and fucking having these circular rocks and oh this will cast this magic that's like pretty boring it, it gives more fleshed out details but it's pretty boring but what i do like is like when hinata showed up and they were talking with the set like the 10 battle sages the luminaries all that yapping all that meeting stuff actually pretty engaging and i hear that this arc we're going into is going to be heavily focused on politics and as long as these are new characters being introduced and other factions that i'm really interested in and, and it's yapping through that way i have no qualms with tentura I'm, I'm gonna put it on gray tier. Elf Pride was a finale. Yes, it was. And just because it was a finale, should I put it in peak? I think that's a bit unfair. How was the episode, actually? It was an extremely cunny episode. It was wrapping up, you know, the season with, I think, anime original content. I'm not completely sure if this is, um, like, um, what's the word? canon or not but despite whether or not if it was canon or filler i thought the episode was pretty great i thought that we were gonna just touch base on the whole you know theme of the show zagan and nephi you know they're kind of socially awkward and they kind of fell into this romantic relationship and even though they're not gonna fucking kiss yet and they literally broke the fourth wall and was like yep who the fuck knows how long this is gonna happen i thought that it was a wholesome ass episode Raphael and you know granddaughter you know, Valafor covering her eyes whenever they're doing something lewd, just like dancing. Pretty cute. Zaga, you know, fixing and buying the record player so that the whole village kids could have fun time. Chastile and Barbatos hinting at further signs of romance. Maybe it was peak. Maybe it was peak. I don't know. Greater peak, fuck. Fuck. I- I- Ah... Uh... I want to put it on great. I feel like it's like high great, low peak. Does that make sense? I feel like it should be up here, but compared to the big titans, I don't know. I think it's got to be below it. I think it was great overall. Blue Archive, we're going to be basically redoing Blue Archive because last week's tier list included the same episode. Blue Archive, even though it airs on Sunday, we kind of wait for the better translations to come out. And unfortunately, due to scheduling, we watch it on Tuesday, which gets uploaded on like Wednesday, your time. So we're still going back to the most recent Blue Archive episode where we had a... Was the most recent episode the fucking... The craziest fight? It was, right? The most recent episode was a craziest fight. Mr. Kaiser is done. Or was that in the last, last episode? I forget. Was the last episode that we saw on our channel... It was, right? It was versus Mr. Kaiser. Problem Solver 68 showing up. Clutching. No, it was that episode. That's right. No, no. It was that episode. And then hinting that the villains are actually not Kaiser Corp. Well, the villains are Kaiser Corp. But, like, the guy with the flame coming out of his head, you know, that wants the strongest mystic, which is Hoshina or Hoshino. That was... And, and then them being like, nah, we're not even, like, part of Kaiser. We're part of some other company. It was like, oh, shit. What's going on there, right? So, I'll put it on great. Was it peak or great? It was a pop-off episode. I want to put it on peak. It was nice to see Problem Solver 68. It was cool to see Auto come back and just clutch for everybody. I'm going to put it on peak. I'm going to put it on peak. Sensei clutch? Sensei? What the fuck does Sensei do? Seriously. What what the fuck does Sensei do? Um. Did he even coordinate the girls? What did he do? He didn't fight. He threw the shield. Hoshin was shield. He had, to, he had to back. He was like, guys! Take the fucking bag. That's right. That that's what did happen. That's that's pretty much it. Re monster. The most re monster episode we watched was I comfortably put it on great. It was like an episode of fights, battles, evolutions. Kichi got a new power up. Earth Day is huge as fuck now. Ogro also did power up, but he's not really using all his new shit just yet. It was like a pretty great episode, and two more girls got pregnant. I think. Yeah. 
Two more human girls got pregnant, and then they they uh, graduated from being called just librarian and blacksmith into whatever the fuck their names are. I'm not gonna bother remembering their names. There's like two episodes left in the season. I don't give a fuck. If the show's not gonna fucking give a fuck, I ain't gonna give a fuck. I put it on a great episode. It was funny. It was a cool hype episode. The fights were pretty decent. I put it in great here. Demon Slayer. Hmm. Gyome. I would put this on great. I thought that while the episode did not focus on Gyomi and I wanted it to, the whole training, the training doesn't matter. What mattered is getting to the rock and not being able to push it and Genya saying, hey, by the way, do you know this completely new mechanic that we're going to drop on your ass? It's called repetitive movement. What was it called? Was it actually called repetitive movement? Basically, basically, you... Think about em strong emotional memories which invoke such a good reaction where your body temperature, your core temperature and heartbeat raises. And these are the byproducts of what it means to be in a Demon Slayer Mark state, right? We talked about that earlier in the season. Now, even if Genya and Gyome, they can do it, they don't have the mark. Tanjiro has the mark and by using repetitive, you know, motion, he was able to then activate the Demon Slayer Mark. So now we have a surefire way to literally fucking just... You know, put Demon Slayer Mark at will. Some other funny stuff was Murata, a named NPC. He actually does matter. And again, I didn't know because I was hating on Season 1 content and we actually did not complete Season 1. I don't even know what the fuck I watched in Season 1, to be honest. I probably rushed through it. But Murata is a named NPC that matters. Muzan scenes with um, the new girl, Nemure. I forget her fucking name. Um, Muzan scene was pretty cool. He wants to find a master as well. There was a talk about... Muzan being like a blemish in the family history of the master. I'm not sure if that implies that they're related or it's as simple as the master's family, you know, is responsible for taking out demons. So Muzan being alive and being such a threat is a stain on the family. Or maybe they're somehow related. I don't know. I thought even though we were just moving to rock, the Demon Slayer Mark activation stuff was kind of hype. Shitting on Zenitsu is more annoying than funny. Genya calm down scenes are kind of cute, I guess. NPC scenes, kind of funny. Probably great or good. I want to put it on great though. Because the Demon Slayer mark, which is so fucking important to the story, finally got activated and we made progress in that plot. So I'd be comfortable putting it on great. Even though it probably should be good. It's probably here. It's like high good, low great. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. Kaiju 8. Kaiju 8. What do you guys think I'm going to put Kaiju 8 on? Kaiju 8's just been delivering every fucking episode. Has there ever been an episode where I put Kaiju 8 on anything less than peak? Kaiju 8 deserves to go to peak. Absolutely. fucking lootly. Non-stop fucking hype. And the episode was like secret revealed or something. And everybody, I think, knew what was going to happen. Mr. Boomer, Oji-san's identity is going to be revealed. How? Well, I'm going to assume that Hoshino is going to be fighting, fighting. Hoshina is going to be fighting, fighting. And then he's going to almost die. Then, you know, Kafka comes in. Monster Henshin and win. But that didn't happen. Baited. Mina showed up. The rest of the squad showed up. Hoshina didn't even fucking go down. Bro fucking kept fighting with 1% battery. He's like, nah, I'ma still fucking fight. He's got no juice, still fighting, outputting a percentage around the 60s, which is still more than any of the other fucking foot soldiers, I think. Despite, you know, having like a cool, it's like overheating of the suit. I think um, Kaiju was fucking sick. And then Kafka showing him to basically one punch the nuke at the very end, right? That was like the kind of like a plot twist of like, oh, wait, is he not going to transform? And it's like, wait, he has to transform because it turned into a giant, you know, nuclear bomb thing. I don't know how delicate it was. I guess like imagine we punched the thing in the air and it just blew up there. We would all die. But luckily enough, we were kind of just able to just push it up. So it went super high in the sky, then exploded. Now, unfortunately, we're getting... You know, we're getting arrested. We we are going to be put in Kaiju jail. It sucks. It sucks. And I'm sure everyone knows that Kafka... Well, the people that's close to Kafka probably understand that he's a good person and this is fucked. But Mina has to just follow protocol. 
I don't blame her. If anything, this is probably a step forward where we put him in jail. The fucking higher up execs are going to have to talk. Hoshina, I hope vouches because everyone did see. Mina saw, our entire division saw, you know, a monster saving humans. And with that knowledge, they should be able to, you know, convince the boomers and say, listen, listen, these fucking monsters are getting stronger and smarter. We need something even beyond what our current strength is. Why not fucking work with the Kaiju, right? Just like Attack on Titan, that same formula. I expect it to happen, but peak episode as usual. Now, date alive. Date alive. What was the most recent episode? It was a date episode that we kissed and then... What happened after we kissed mom? What happened after we, we kissed mom? It's probably gonna be Greater Peak. Mom fucking expected it. Mom was wanting the kiss the entire time. Mom was like, mm -mm -mm, I knew you were gonna do that. I got your fucking memories now because once um, a soul corridor or soul path has been established, it's not just like powers being sealed. It's literally like, um, what's it called? Your memories get transferred as well. But here's the thing. I don't exactly know what else is implied during that kiss scene because Rainy is a clone of Mio. Mio still trans, you know, combined with Rainy, and uh, she was able to use Ainz, you know? Do we have, did we seal our power a little bit though? Because you know how every other girl we kiss, you know, they can use their powers, but we also have a little bit of their power, so we can still use it. I'm like, are, did we get a little bit of Ainz? Because like right now, this timeline, knowing like like we have what two episodes left i don't think it's possible to just redo it i feel like this is still a decent run no one significant has died nothing so fucking terrible has happened yet even kurumi has survived i'm not sure how she did because i was fully under the assumption that the og kurumi had the seraphim or what the the fucking crystal and mio went into that apparently she went into a shadow i don't know how the fuck that works but clearly kurumi's still alive because the one like i donated I'm assuming it's a fucking clone. I don't know how that works, but uh, the real Kurumi, I think, is still alive. So this is still a viable run. I'm just kind of confused on, like, we got two episodes left. How are we going to wrap this up or get to a conclusion point before the season end? But overall, I think it was, like, a pretty peak episode. Konosuba. Konosuba episode. It was... Pretty great. Most of the episode was kind of set up and trying to figure out what is our plan and not doing much and just being upset. And then the later half, the backloaded content was crashing the fucking wedding. Aqua's in disguise. Cosmo's in disguise. All these nobles don't know anything what's coming. And we crashed the wedding. I think that the future episode, like this week's episode, is going to be absolutely peak. But judging by the content of what we've gotten so far of last episode, which was mostly just kind of just ruminating and thinking about what we should do and stuff like that. I don't think it's really peak, but that last tab, the crashing shit, that was absolutely peak, and hopefully next episode's gonna be even fucking better. Misfit of Demon King Academy. I would put this in... Peak. The Kui can... <laughs> Anytime Misfit does some dumbass fucking humor, and anytime Misfit does some fucking dumbass humor, I'm just a sucker for the stupid comedy that Misfit has. Something about Misfit comedy just gets me. The Ku Iku, the fucking singing band. <laughs> They're just fucking singing. And then all these fucking boomers are like, what, what is this? And then the eight great sages are like, oh, this is such profound lyrics. And everyone's like, Sasuga. And it's like, what the fuck? It's like... Imagine like going back, like like going to North Korea with like K-pop idols, and this has been done. And the North Korean people, they have no fucking clue what K-pop, and they see this and they're like, "What the fuck is this?" And and one of them might be like, "You know what? This is a fucking banger." And they're like, "Wow, oh, this is actually so profound." The battles I don't really care for. The battle against the god, hey, eh, it's just Anos doing Anos things. I don't really give a fuck. The other Draconoid King though, that guy was pretty cool. I enjoy how. You know, righteous and good sportsmanship he was. Ahide, just a fucking cockroach. 
And then we're getting a little bit of um, the Pope or fighting against, you know, the head of the church. So next couple episodes should be pretty hype. But classic, classic Misfit of Demon King Academy scheduling. I think we're on hiatus next week. So Misfits is just barely hanging on in terms of viewership. Hopefully, you know, it's not going to disrupt it too much. Level 2 cheat. What happened most recently? Uh, it was... Uh, I probably put it in peak. It was young brother getting kicked out, right? Gozal basically kicking him, kicking him out, right? And then the red arrow is showing the entire time. That was pretty funny. Um, the fucking what's it called? Balidoza had to basically get over it, right? And again, this is not today's episode. This is last week's episode. Balidoza had to come to face the terms that the Demon King is gonna be fucking roommates with this nut because he's fucking broke. And then there's a lot of funny scenes here and there of, you know, Balidoza trying to like avoid him. And at the end, she kind of did confront. And it's looking like there's been progress made. And then the two fucking idiots, the fake hero and the fake gold digger, bro. They escaped. They fucking escaped. And thank you. Thanks to Gozal that's taking out, you know, the younger brother. And they're bringing a bag with like miasma filled shit. So I'm gonna guess that today's episode, more, more fucking drama is gonna happen because of those two idiots. But without them, you know, we can't have like conflict or drama for us to show up and save the day. So I guess we should be thankful that they just keep giving us the content, huh? To be honest, she's loyal as fuck. That's why I said fake gold digger. Listen to what I'm saying. And then here's a list of animes that's been dropped because you guys have simply not shown up to the videos. And what can I say? Continue to make videos on topics that my audience doesn't care about is the fastest way to kill a YouTube you know, channel's growth. I got to focus on what you guys enjoy. But this, I think, is safely the week 11. I forget what week this is, but the most recent episodes that I've seen. It's too many episodes in peak, man. I feel like I need to fucking readjust this shit so that we have like less episodes in peak. But honestly, Kaiju 8, Mushoku Tensei, right? Skimichi, Seventh Prince. I would comfortably put these four in peak. Maybe, maybe these four should be in great. And then these should be brought down to good. And then these should be brought down to mid. I don't know. Maybe we need like another fucking tier called like peak plus plus. I don't fucking know. But that's this week's episode's tier list. And if you're upset by a random person's opinion about 2D characters, go get a fucking job, you fucking loser.